All right, we're, if you turn to the book of Acts, you think we're done with Acts. No, we're not. We'll be there. We'll be in a lot of places this morning. The last chapter in the book of Acts. Now, I know it's been, and I looked at my notes, I tell Sister Stanfield, and usually it's been two months since I've taught uh, because my work's been crazy. And then we've had the Hanais coming to candidate with us, and it's just been one thing after another. And so my son has taught the last four weeks, I think. I can't remember, something like that. And I thought he, I thought he did a good job, not because I'm his parent and all that, but he does, I thought he did a very well job in uh, what he did presenting that. Uh, we'll touch on one thing he brought up last week. Does anybody remember what he talked about last week, who he talked about, a person? Well, we'll come to that guy's name later on. So you keep thinking, you keep looking through the book if you want to, to figure it out. But he brought a guy's name up, and we'll talk about bringing that up again. So we're in Acts chapter 28, and to our guests that are with us, we've been going through the life of Paul. And my Sunday school class thought I'll never get done. We're to almost to the end. This is lesson 31, I think, is where we're at now. He thought, how in the world can you go this long? One lesson. One series here. Now, I know some authors, and, and I've read different commentaries, and they say, well, Paul, he only was in prison one time. In the book we're using here, I don't have it with me, you all have copies of that book. He talks about there was two imprisonments, that Paul was released after this first imprisonment, and then he was arrested later on, and of course, then he was executed. So that's the, that's the, the way I'm presenting this today. Um, we're at this point now in Acts chapter 28. The last chapter here where Paul's been in his house for two years. We'll talk about that in a moment here. But here we're talking about where Paul's been in, in prison in Rome and then he's been released. That's the path I'm taking. That's how I'm laying this out for you. And I'll explain why. And you may not say, well, that's not it. He didn't do it. He was only in there prison one time and that's it. That's it's either way. I don't know. I've read different commentaries, but everybody I seem to read, they always talk about his second imprisonment, but they don't go into a lot more about it. So I read some comments, yeah, after his second imprisonment, then he wrote, you know, the first Timothy, Titus, and second Timothy, you know, in that point. And of course, second Timothy was written while he was in prison, right before he was executed, of course. So that's how this is laid out. So we're in, we're in lesson 31. My plan is to do lesson 32, which will be part two of this journey. That'll be the final journey, of course, of his, his being executed is where I plan to talk about that next week, Lord willing. And then we got two more other lessons to deal with his, uh, some other events that are in that book about Paul. So, this here, don't strain your eyes too bad. I've got copies up here for you to help you a little bit. I know it's a little tough to see. But this is my timeline about Paul's life. Uh, we've shown this before. I've shown parts of this before. It's been going through. But trying to <clears throat> give you an idea. Of course, here's when our... The, the death burial of our Lord Jesus Christ right here. So about 30 A.D. that takes place. Paul's conversion about 35 A.D. You know, he's about 30 years old. And this is his ministry period until his death, about 63 years of age at that time. I mean, everybody has, you know, we're just doing the best we can reading from the scriptures, trying to figure it all out and from historical information that we know. We didn't have... Uh, you know, any of the news channels, the fake news people there to, to record any of this for us. So we're doing the best we can from what we got to work with. Um, so we're going to talk, you know, we're going to jump here in a second. You'll see this part right here. Right here is where I'm going to go to more so for this lesson here is where it's going to be at. There's more details here, so I had to do this on a separate slide for you. Anybody have any question about this before I move on? Like I said, I have a copy of this slide and the next slide for you up here. So you can have that later after we get done. One thing here is look at Paul's journeys. His traveling and preaching journeys is about approximately 15 years of time traveling. And let me ask you this question for the class who do should know this question. How many trips did he make? How many journeys did he make? Three. Not counting this one we're going to talk about here in a second, but the other three. Now, what are they? Remember how to remember those? In order would help. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. That's the A. C is Corinth. Corinth, right. D 
Ephesus, all right? Rome, okay? We use the acronym PACER for that, for Paul was the running the race, Paul, and then got P-A-C-E-R, is how we're doing that. I didn't come up with that, somebody else did. I'm not that smart to come up with those things. But somebody else came with that. <clears throat> so with this here, here's the, that other part, the details I'm expanding on, but here, here's Nero, is the Caesar at this time period here. Remember we talked about here the journey to Rome? Um, he was in Caesarea, he was there in Caesarea, he was in prison there. Felix, remember Felix and Festus and all those guys he had to deal with there. And he was at, he, this is before he went to Rome. This is in Caesarea um, that he had to deal with. Then he was on the trip to Rome. So he's in Rome, and in the passage here in Rome chapter, in, Rome, in Acts chapter 28, it says in verse 30, and Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding. So we know he was in Rome at least two years, and it says right here, two years in his house. And that's how the book of Acts ends, of course. Now, these here is possibility, and this is a, you know, I mean, it's, you can dispute it and throw it out different ways you want to. But here's these different areas here. The, from, the, from the book that we're using, the, those who have a copy of that book, he talks about he went to Ephesus, he went to Colossae, he went to Philippi. When he went to Philippi, he possibly wrote 1 Timothy at that time, about 63 AD. But in 64 AD, you see Rome burned, and Nero's persecutions begin about 64 AD. Is when his persecutions of Christians starts to take place. Then Paul probably went to Crete, to Corinth, and while he was in Corinth, he possibly wrote Titus, the book of Titus. And Paul, it says in the book of Titus, in chapter 3, we'll talk about that, in three, chapter 3, verse 12, where he's, he asked uh, Titus to meet him in Nicopolis, which is right there near, near Corinth. So then, did he go to Spain? I put a question mark here. Did he go to Spain this time? Did he go to Spain before this time? That's up in the air. We'll talk about that as we go through the lesson a little bit more for you this morning. Um, to Ephesus, uh, to Philippi, to Troas, possibly in Troas is when he was probably arrested the second time and then taken to prison again for the second time. And of course he's at Rome and he writes 2 Timothy, his last letter of course, and then he's executed. And shortly after that, then Nero dies of suicide. So that's what I have up here for you. And that's, we're going to cover quite a bit of this territory this morning. Hopefully I can bring it together for you as we go through this, as we go through. So hope and trust. What is our hope and trust? What do we hope and trust in? And do we have hope? Should you have hope and trust? Yes. You should. You should never be hopeless, right? You should never be hopeless, no matter what the situations are. And Paul talks about hope and trust. And you think, what does this got to do with this lesson? Hopefully you'll see it comes together for you here in a second. But having hope and trust is very important. Hope in what? Hope. Yeah, but do we hope in salvation? Trust. We trust the Lord for our salvation. Don't we? But I'm talking about in daily life, don't we have to have hope as we go through things? Peace. Pardon? Hope for peace and knowledge. Yeah. And our trust is in whom? The Lord Jesus Christ. Our trust is in him. Let me share this passage with you, what Paul wrote in Philippians. Him, therefore, I hope to sin presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Paul wrote this while he was in prison, the book of Philippians. And he's writing to the Philippians that what? But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. If he's writing to the Philippians, where are they at? Where are they at? Philippi, right, right. Oh, the answer, good, good answer. They're in Philippi. He's writing to these guys. Hey, I'm in prison, and I have hope that I can sin. Uh, him, therefore, I hope to sin presently, so, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. He's in prison. Is he not in a prison situation? With, he's in his hired house, but he's under arrest, of course. But he's in Rome. He's in this situation here under, uh, in his hired house. He's under arrest. But he's saying, I'm going to see how this goes, you know, how this, I hope how this goes here. Hope to sin presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. 
But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. I'm writing to you, Philippians, that maybe I can come. I'm hoping to come see you. I trust that I, the Lord will allow me to come see you. He's planning on that. Paul had not give up hope is what I'm trying to get to. And Paul was trusting the Lord always for everything in his life, what was to happen to him. So, evidence and travel plans. So with this lesson here, it's a tricky lesson because I'm talking about an event that's questionable for some people. Did Paul was released from Rome? And did he go on some more trips? Did he go to Spain? You know, all of that. You think, well, why was it written about? Why don't we have recordings of him being in Spain? Or do we? Oh, it's tough this morning. I'm being too challenging. To... Let's look at a few things. I just read that passage to you. Paul wrote these letters, known as the prison epistles. These here are the prison epistles here. Possibly Hebrews. Now, Hebrews is up for debate. Did Paul write it? It wasn't really his style of writing. Did he write it? I don't know. People are adamant. Yes, he wrote it and all that. And some say, no, Paul couldn't have wrote that. It could have been Apollos and all that. I don't know the answer there either. You know. Right. Because it wasn't... Well, and, and interesting, I'll stop right here. Commercial. When we get done with this lessons here with Paul, I plan to talk about the book of Hebrews. So we'll study the book of Hebrews. So if you want to read in advance the book of Hebrews, that's where we're going to go. But for this purpose here, we don't know for sure that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. And I'll talk about that again. There's always debate about who, who wrote the book. But you know what? I don't think it should be a church split. You know, if you don't think Paul, you think Paul wrote it and all y'all sit on that side and y'all don't think he wrote it, y'all sit on this side, y'all are undecided, you sit in the middle. It's not a big deal. But we know it's the scriptures and we know it's there. Okay? So these are the ones we do know that Paul addressed. You know, he said, you know, the Ephesians, the Philippians, Colossians, Philemon, and those. And he wrote these in prison while he was there. In Rome, in his house. So, a little background here on the epistles. Remember these here? I'll put them all up here for you. Eschatology, dealing with the future events and things taking place. Ecclesiology, dealing with the church administration. Now, this is just a broad term for that, okay? It's more things involved, of course, in these passages, in the epistles, of course. But in those we call the prison epistles, and those we call the pastoral epistles, okay? So the pastoral epistles are ones we're going to touch on a little bit here as we go through this lesson today. Of course, Hebrews comes in about here. If it comes here, I read someplace, well, that was probably written maybe 63 A.D. or 60, you know, I don't know. Nobody has, there's no dates anywhere. You know, Paul didn't write down, this is the date I'm writing this, this letter to y'all. You know, or any one of these. Okay? So the evidence. Let's look at the evidence. What is the evidence? We ought to see evidence, so our evidence is what? So It's proof. Is there proof of anything that took place that we know of? Well, there's biblical evidence, and there's what's called we call traditional or other sources, historical information that we may have. Okay, so I put the historical things first, the traditional things or other sources first before you, and the biblical we'll touch on that in a second as well. So there's other testimonies, the testimonies of others who wrote history and dealt with history, and it may have been close. We'll deal with talk, see what they said here, and then there's historical events that we do know took place. Okay, then on the other side, is the biblical is the on the biblical is the pastoral epistles from the epistles themselves that Paul wrote. What does it say about his journey? Did he make journeys about? And the imprisonment descriptions between the first imprisonment and the second imprisonment. Is there a difference? Is there a difference in descriptions here? So others testimony. Clement of Rome, and I got this right here, and I have copies of this for you too. So laid up here. This comes from a book, uh, The Life and Epistles of St. Paul by W.J. Conneberry and J.S. Hosen. They wrote this back in the 1800s when they wrote this. The book is like that thick. If you like small print, that's the good size. If you like small print. I have a small print like that. You know, the book's that thick, about like that. But I also have it printed out like this. It makes it easier to read for these old eyes trying to read this. You can find this on the internet. You can print this out if you want to. You can see it. It's, it's available. But I made copies of this for you for this part here. But he says for Clement, Clement says, Clement of Rome, it says the most important part of it supplied by Clement, the disciple of St. Paul, mentioned in Philemon chapter 4, verse 3. 
who was afterwards Bishop of Rome, this author, writing from Rome to Corinth, expressly asserts that Paul had preached the gospel in the East and in the West, that he had instructed the whole world, the Roman Empire, which was commonly known, so-called, the whole Roman Empire was known as the whole world, the empire that they knew, in righteousness, and that he, quote, had gone to the extremity of the West before his martyrdom. In other words, Clement is saying, Paul had gone to the string parts of the Roman Empire, which would have been to Spain. So that's his viewpoint from this guy he wrote. And I gave you the time about when he exists, about 30 to 100 AD. Here's another guy, or it's a group of writings here, Muratur's Canon, written about 170 AD. And it says, the next piece of evidence which, which we possess on the subject is contained in the canon of the New Testament, compiled by an unknown Christian about the year 170 AD, which is commonly called Moretti's Canon. In this document, it is said in the account of the Acts of the Apostles that Luke's relates to Theopolis, events of which he was an eyewitness, is also in a separate place, talking about in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 through 33. He evidently declares the martyrdom of Peter, but amidst the journey of Paul from Rome to Spain. He's thinking that they, they missed out on this journey that Paul made to Spain. The next guy is Esabus. I may not say his name right, but Caesarea. He's also called the father of ancient history. He wrote a series of books called Ecclesiastical History that he wrote. Now you see about what time he lived, about 260 to 340 AD. Understanding with anybody who wrote back then, we have a critical mind. So where'd you get your resources from? They're pretty closer to the resources than we are. You know, back in 300, 200 AD, so they're a little closer than we are. They could have put their little slant on that too. We understand it. Anybody who writes could put a slant on anything they say. But he says in the next place, Isabus tells us, quote, after defending himself successfully, it is currently reported that the apostle again went forth to proclaim the gospel and afterwards came to Rome a second time and was martyred under Nero. Doesn't say where he went to, but just says there was a second imprisonment. This other guy, John Chrysostom, I like the guy's name, John. I can handle that part. The other part is a little tougher for me. He was also known as Golden Mouth. He had a, uh, they say he had an elegant way of speaking. According to him, who mentions it as an undoubted historical fact that St. Paul, after his residence in Rome, quote, St. Paul, after, quote, St. Paul, after his residence in Rome, departed to Spain, unquote. The last one here is Jerome. You see what time he lived. It says, about this time, St. Jerome bears the, the same testimony, saying that, quote, Paul was dismissed by Nero that he might preach Christ, Christ's gospel in the West, unquote. So that's what um, Conibert and Hosen, these two guys who wrote this book back in the 1800s, and I said, it, if you want some interesting reading in the thick, thick book, or if you want it on the internet, whichever way you want to look at it, very interesting. A lot of detail, they go into a lot of things about Paul's life. But that's their viewpoint that they're bringing. This, this, is, this is their evidence, I guess, in their way, bringing that to us. So look at this other part of evidence. Historical events. Did, did uh, Rome burn? Pretty well known that Rome burned. The question is, who did it? Who is the culprit? Who is the, uh, declared to be the culprit? Nero. Nero, the crazy guy. He is supposedly the one who started Rome to be on fire, and they always make this thing about he was playing his musical instrument, you know, singing while Rome was burning and all that. Possibly so. But with him, he did what? He blamed it on the bad structures we had in town and all this, and how the, the way the city government was run. Now he blamed it on the Christians. Because he really wanted to build something, and in order to do that, he got to get rid of some people. He got to get rid of some places, clear up the opening, because he wanted to build something to himself. So he blamed the Christians for this fire in Rome, is what's understood. And so persecution started for the Christians. Approximately July of 64 AD, approximately, we don't know exactly, but of course. No news reporters were there to write this all down for us, of course. Well, what happened? Hey, yeah, you there? You there? Oh, there you are. Back again. 
course, he did the persecutions. We, and that went on for several years with him. Of course, he was about 64 AD, and, and like I so, showed you earlier, Nero died of committed suicide about 68 AD, but persecution kept going on and on, all these persecutions that took place. He is also notorious for taking Christians and putting them up and having them burnt, being crucified and be burnt for his, his games and all that alive. So a horrible event took place then, about 64 AD. So where was Paul? By this time, we think Paul was not in prison. He was not there at that time. He was traveling away. He had already been released by this time. Now, pastoral epistles. This is from the scriptures here themselves. What does this say? So, 1 Timothy and Acts. In Acts chapter 19, verse 22, it says, So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Ratus, but he... Paul himself stayed in Asia for a season. Now this was written before he goes to prison. Acts chapter 19 verse 22. First Timothy, he writes, As I besought thee to bide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Here it talks about him when I went into Macedonia. When he went there. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking this from the book that the author had here that we're dealing with. How he's pointing out that here, either he, was in, he was in Asia at one time, but now he's in Macedonia here. And when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge them that they teach no other doctrine. He's talking to Timothy, of course. Here's another thing to look at. Titus 1.5 compared to Acts 27. And Acts 27 said, But after long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this, this harm and loss. Remember, when did that take place? Remember? When did that phrase, when did this passage, Acts 27, verse 21, take place in Paul's journeys? He was, that's right, he was on his way to Rome. Remember on that boat there? And Paul told him not to lose from Crete, and they did anyways. He tried to warn him. Okay? But in Titus chapter 1, verse 5, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. When he stopped in Crete, remember that time they were in Crete, about in Acts chapter 27, verse 21? Was it a mission journey? No. They're just there for a moment there for a while for that ship because that storm and Paul warned them, you should have hearkened unto me and have not, not have loosed from Crete and to have, gained, to have gained this harm and loss to their ship, of course, and to their lives. They didn't lose anybody, but they lost a lot of things on the ship. But in, Acts, in Titus chapter 1, he says, for this cause left I thee in Crete that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city. The other one here that he writes, 2 Timothy compared to Philemon. Philemon's only got one chapter. In Philemon chapter 1, he writes, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. In 2 Timothy, he wrote, The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. Now, what's here is, Philemon, he's got who with him? Timothy. And he's where? Our brother unto Philemon, our daily beloved. Where is, he, where is he at when he's writing Philemon? Is this too many questions I'm asking first thing in the morning? Remember the prison, prison epistles? That's a hint. Prison epistles. So he's in prison and he writes the book of Philemon. And who's with him? Guys, Timothy. Timothy's with him, Okay. In 2 Timothy, I already said to you earlier, when he wrote 2 Timothy, he's saying here, he's writing to Timothy. Where's Timothy at? Right beside me in prison? No, no, no. Timothy's somewhere else. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee and the books, but especially the parchments. You see where I'm at? Am I confusing to you? Is this totally confusing? When he writes Philemon, he's in prison. And right beside him, right in the same, probably right here is Timothy, right here with him. He's at, well, he's at that, he's in a house arrest, you know what I'm saying? It's a two years house arrest, he's there, there, because we have that in Acts. And Timothy's there with him. But now when he writes this second Timothy, he's telling Timothy, which is not next to him anymore, he's off somewhere else. 
He says, the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee in the books, but especially the parchments. So Timothy wasn't present with him. He was somewhere else. Okay? He's saying, like, John, you're not, you're not explain this well enough. You got it? You got it straight? <laughs> Hopefully it clear. It, when I saw this, it made more sense to me when I'm reading it. Maybe I'm not explaining as well as this should be. So the two descriptions of imprisonment is our two descriptions here in the scriptures. This is from the scriptures as well. So if you believe in the first Roman imprisonment and you believe in the second Roman imprisonment, different times, of course, this is what's written. Paul was accused by the Jews and appealed to Caesar. In Acts chapter 25, verses 7 through 11. Over here, Paul was arrested as a criminal in 2 Timothy 2, verse 9. If you want to turn here, 2 Timothy 2, verse 9, and you'll, be, you'll be in 2 Timothy quite a bit. Yeah, 2 Timothy. 2 verse 9 says, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Whereas in Acts chapter 28, what do we read about him? He's in a house for two years, and what happens there? Yes, people will come and go and talk and asking questions, you know, just that constant. You'll see that here too as well. Paul was held in comfortable accommodations, Acts chapter 28, verse 30. Over here, Paul was chained in the dank, dark dungeon. How do you like that dank, dark dungeon? I didn't come up with that. Somebody else did this. Interesting. 2 Timothy chapter 1, it says, chapter 1, verse 6, it says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Whoop. Yeah, that's what he says, 2 Timothy. In chapter 4, verse 13. 13, where are we at? Well, here it talks about the same passage we read earlier. The, the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. So don't you get a feel there's a different situation here? When Acts chapter 28, he's in a house, and he's got people coming and going, and friends there with him, that are with him. But over here in, in, in uh, 2 Timothy, he's asking for what? Bring that cloak with you, and bring those parchments with you, wherever you're at. You know, where you're at, and bring them with you, Timothy. Paul was attended by many friends, what we just said here, Sister Mary, by many friends and associates. And I'm not going to read all those here. But then over here, it was difficult for Paul's friends to locate him. In, Acts, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, it says, Wherefore, for God hath not given us the power. I don't know why it says that. It doesn't look like it's the right words. Um, 7. Oh, 17. No wonder. I didn't know what it looked like. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. Talking about Onesimus. Uh, in verse 16, the Lord gave mercy unto the house of Onesimus, for he oft refreshed me and was, was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. Apparently, it was a little harder to find. The last point is Paul only had Luke with him at the end. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, it says. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. So there seems to be, and there seems to be, if you're laying it out like this, there seems to be two imprisonments. Just how it seems to come out. But if you don't want to believe that, it's okay. Church doesn't have to split. We don't get upset and we won't vote you out. Okay? <laughs> Just kidding with you. Here's that view I gave you earlier, just a quick view of that, really quick, the travel plans. So Paul's travels from Rome to, to from Rome. He leaves Rome. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 23. So you're going to be a lot of different passages here, so especially in these epistles. Philippians chapter 2. 2, 2. 2, verse 23. Him therefore I hope to send presently as soon as I shall see how it is, will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself should come shortly. Remember, that's the passage we used very, at the very beginning of this, when Paul wrote the Philippians. So he's looking forward to going to Philippi. So at Ephesus, it says, he says to Philemon, I know I should have wrote all these down, but I don't want to write all these down. Philemon, Ephesians, Philippians, you do all that time? Philippians, Philemon, Philemon chapter 1, verse 22 says, But withal prepare me also a lodging. 
For I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. 1 Timothy chapter 1, in verse 3 he says, chapter 1, verse 3, As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some of them that teach no other doctrine. At Colossae, he goes to Colossae. And Philemon, you just saw chapter 1, verse 22, we just read that, what he said, But with all prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that that through your prayers I shall be given unto thee. Now, why do you think it's at Colossae here? I didn't realize this until I got to studying this. Philemon is at Colossae. Okay? And the reason being because of the people that he mentions here. This here. Archippus, in Philemon chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, And to our beloved Aphia, Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Now, he's writing to Philemon. But he also says in Colossians chapter 4, verse 17, Colossians chapter 4, the epistle that he wrote from prison, 4, 17, he says, Say to Archippus, take heed to the, to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Onesimus, he wrote to Onesimus, Philemon chapter 1, and verse 9, he says, Yet for love's sake, I'd rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the age, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Where is it at? Um, verse 10. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Now back over to uh, Colossians 4, verse 9, it says, With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. And then others, there's other people's mentioned in Philemon chapter 1. We'll read the ones in Colossians while we're right there. Colossians chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you. And Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom you receive commandment, if ye come unto you, receive him. And Jesus, which is called Justice, who are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow laborers, fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand fast and complete in all the will of God. For him I bear record that he hath a great zeal for you, and, and them that are in Laodicea, and them in Epaphras. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and in Ephesus, and the church which is in his house. Now Paul writes the book of Colossians to the people who are in Colossae, and he names these people there, does he not? So let's go back over to Philemon. Philemon chapter 1, of course, in verse 23 it says, get to Philemon chapter 1, verse 23, There salute thee Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, be with your spirit. Continue on to Philippi. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. I think we read that. Paul wrote the epistle to 1 Timothy about that time, we think. To Crete. Now, here at Crete, let's go to Titus chapter 1, if you would please. Titus, Timothy, Titus chapter 1. For this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Titus possibly was a member of Paul's team at that in evangelizing Crete. Remember earlier we talked about being in Crete. It was chapter 27 and the ship, remember the ship was there and he told the guys don't leave Crete and they left Crete anyways. But here it looks like Timothy was, uh, Timothy, Titus was part of his team there and he left Titus there to help to evangelize Crete. At Corinth, now Titus chapter 3 verse 12 says, 3 verse 12. When I shall send Artemis, Artemis unto thee, or Tychus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. That is near Crete, that's in, in that peninsula there. And Paul told, told Titus to meet him there. So Paul, about this time Paul wrote the book of Titus when he was writing his epistle to Titus there. To Spain. Did he go to Spain? I don't know. 
I mean, I read you guys, those guys historically that said, said, yeah, he went to Spain and all that. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I would think my personal thought was, if he went to Spain, why isn't there anything said about it by Paul of anything? You know, I don't know. So I put that here. I just don't know if he did make the trip to Spain, even though he wanted to, because Romans chapter 15, verse 24, if you want to turn there, that was his desire. Where is it? Romans 15. Romans 15. It's one, I think it's going to be one of those things we won't know until we get to heaven. We just ain't going to know. 15, verse 24. Wherefore, whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to you to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thitherward by you. At first I somewhat filled with your company. In what, verse 28 it says, When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain. Now this is when he wrote the book of Romans, and he hadn't been to Rome yet. Remember, he wrote this earlier, and he wrote the book of Romans. John, he says that he's in this passage here, that he's going to Jerusalem to see where he was arrested. But he may have been planning to go to Spain. But he went to Jerusalem, he got arrested, and got sent to Rome. Mm -hmm. I doubt if he ever made it to Spain. Well, see, some, even this book that we got that we're using here, the author says, he says, well, possibly this time he went to Spain, but he said, maybe he went to Spain. As soon as he got out of prison, he went over west and went to Spain. I don't know. I don't. My thought is, let me ask you this question. When the book of Acts ends like it does, why does it end like it does? When who's with him? Who's writing the book of Acts? Luke. Luke is with him. And Luke ends the book of Acts with what? Being in his house in Rome and all that. So keep that in mind, because that's one of my questions to you later on at the end of this lesson here. So I don't know if Paul went to Spain or not. I, would th I, would, I, I don't know. But there's other journeys, other places he went that we don't know anything about either. You know, Paul, Luke didn't write every detail of his life either. You know. But what we do know. To Ephesus, probably Alexander the coppersmith stirred up trouble against Paul in Acts chapter 19 verse 33 and then verse remember that was, that was a situation with Alexander there doesn't name Alexander the carpus, coppersmith there is an Alexander there and then 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14 2 Timothy 4 14 because he talks about 2 Timothy 4 14 Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil the Lord reward him according to his works and that's possibly in, because in Ephesus in Acts chapter 19, there's an Alexander there that's referenced there in Acts chapter 19. At Troas, Paul was possibly arrested here and taken to Rome. And reason being, remember that passage we read in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 13, when he asked Timothy to do what? Bring his cloak and bring his parchments, those things for him. Possibly he was arrested there by the Roman, you know, by, at that time there, was, and couldn't take any of that stuff with him. That's the possibility. I know this is all speculation. I know it's all just trying to conjecture this together somehow. But um, James Stalkner writes, and I don't know if you all ever seen James Stalkner's book. I think he wrote back in the late 1800s. Where did I got here? Right here. He says this more eloquently than I would. He says... The book of Acts suddenly breaks off with a brief sur summary of Paul's two years imprisonment at Rome. Is this because there was no more to tell? When his trial came on, did it issue in, this, in, his, in his condemnation and his death? Or did he get out of prison and resume his old occupations? Where Paul's lucid narrative so suddenly deserts us, tradition comes in uh, proffering in doubtful aid. It tells us that he was acquitted on his trial and let out of prison. Uh, let his re let that he resumed his travels, visiting Spain among other places. But that before long he was arrested again and sent back to Rome where he died a martyr's death at the cruel hands of Nero. Happily, however, we are not altogether dependent on the precarious aid of tradition. We have writings of Paul's own undoubtedly subsequent to the two years of his first imprisonment. These are all what are called the pastoral epistles. 
the epistles to Timothy and Titus. In these we shall we see that he regained his liberty and resumed his employment in visiting, of visiting his old churches and founding, founding new ones. His footsteps cannot indeed be any longer traced with certainty. We find him back at Ephesus and Troas. We find him in Crete, an island at which he touched on his voyage to Rome, in which he, he may have become interested. We find, we find him exploring new territory in the north parts of Greece. We see him once more, like the commander of an army who sends his aides, deca aides decamped all over the field of battle, sending out his young assistants to organize and watch over the churches. And that's what James Stalkner wrote in his book, kind of summarizing this. His viewpoint was that, yes, Paul, Paul was released, and he went back to the churches, and as he journeyed back to these church, churches here. Based on what information, what I tried, and I didn't do it very good well, I don't think, try to show you from the epistles that Paul wrote, the pastoral epistles, these different things here. Wrap this up for you. What does it got to do with hope and trust? Like I said, Paul was where? He was in prison, and we're going to get to the point that he's going to be back in prison again here in a moment. Next, next week we'll talk about that. But while he was in prison, in the house for two years, he still had what? In Philippians, he said what? He had hope and he had trust. Trust of the Lord would do things. This here is called, did you hear him? The Indian Rebellion of 1857 took place in India. The British were there and they were being, rebe uh, the, the Indians, native Indians there were rebelling against them. During the Indian Mutiny, the English were besieged in the city of Lak Lucknow. And were in momentary expectation of perishing at the hands of the fiends that surrounded them. A Scottish lassie was in this fort. And while laying on the ground, she suddenly shouted, her face aglow with joy. Did you hear him coming? Did you hear him coming? Hear what, they asked. Did you hear him coming? She sprang to her feet. It was the bagpipes of her native Scotland, she heard. It was a native air, she heard that was being played by a regiment of her countrymen marching to the relief of those captives and their deliverers and made them free. She had hope because she heard of her bagpipes that she was used to for her native land. In that story there, she heard the bagpipes and the British and the Scottish guys who came and rescued them in India, this regiment that came and rescued them. Always hope and always hope and what? She had a hope but she also had a what? A trust. And these guys that she knew were from her homeland. Paul always had hope in what? In the Lord Jesus Christ. And always had trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what his situation is and that he was in. He was in prison, wherever he was at. He's always trusting the Lord. Where would you have me to be at? And what would you have me to do? To wrap this up. When Paul, when the Apostle Paul wrote the prison epistle to the Philippians, he expressed hope in leaving and was trusting the Lord to see him through the situation. Remember that passage we used? We just had it there to you before. When events look bleak in our lives, should we not have our trust, our hope and trust in the Lord to see us through them? Yes, we should always. If we always life is not always easy, is it? It's not great and grand and just wonderful every day. We have some bad situations. We go through some situations, don't we? But we need to have our hope and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ at all times. The last point here is, what about when Luke wrote the book of Acts and how it ended? And that's what I asked you earlier, how the book of Acts ended earlier. If Paul was martyred and Luke is with him in writing the book of Acts, why does he stop and not say, and Paul went to be with the Lord? You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. But how does he end the book? If Paul, if Luke is it with him, he ends the book, Acts chapter two, Acts, Acts chapter twenty-eight. We read that earlier. I, I just want to leave that out there for you to think about this. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own house and received all that came in unto him preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Was Paul, went before Nero, and was he acquitted and was released? And did he go make these other trips and travel around back to the churches and all that? Did he make it to Spain? I don't know that answer either. But it just seems odd how this, when, when you got a guy like Luke 
constantly is a companion. And what did he say in, in Acts in um, Second Timothy when Paul wrote Second Timothy? Who else is with him? Luke is with him. But here, apparently, there's others that are here with him in this prison that are able to come and see him and visit him, help him, fellow helpers and all that. But when Paul writes 2 Timothy, the only person that's there with him is Luke. And why would, Paul, why would Luke write the book of Acts and just stop right there? Would he not write also about, Luke, I mean about Paul if Paul was executed? Would he not have said something about the Apostle Paul, you know, being executed? That's, that's my viewpoint. I kept thinking about this and tossed it around trying to think about it. I don't know the answer to that. I just thought it was kind of an abrupt way how the book of Acts ends. And I understand this is the word of God and it's how God wanted it and that's it and we should not question it. May, may be. 